So if you could tell us a little bit about what it takes to become a neuropsychologist, like, you know, it, it's so many different areas of psychology plus a bit of neurology. How did you get sp so specialized? Sure. Uh, piece of cake. No, just kidding. <laughs> so it starts with uh, becoming, to be a clinical psychologist, you have to be a clinical psychologist. So you have to get licensed through appropriate means. Um, then legally, you can call yourself a neuropsychologist. That's not a controlled term. But yes. to be a good, <laughs> actually qualified neuropsychologist, you should have a lot of, there are some, I do recommend people look up the Houston guidelines um, right. for where a bunch of people got, neuropsychologists got together to determine what, what should a neuropsychologist know, okay? The idea was that you would have years and years of training, postdoc, pre-doc. Um, you would have classes, academic classes, whether that's didactics that you got on certain placements, but also um, theoretically in your grad school, you would get some of these classes as well, where you get training in neuroanatomy, understanding of neurobehavioral syndromes, like what happens with epilepsy? What does a TBI usually do to a brain? What are some of the patterns of dysfunction that can occur from different illnesses and issues was ADHD look like, et cetera. Um, so that's some of it. And then a lot of understanding in psychometrics, knowing the limitations and abilities of these tests to measure what we're trying to measure. So there's a lot. Um, what I did was get obsessed with neuropsychology part of the way through regular clinical psychology grad school. So you don't have to be in a neuropsych based track necessarily in your grad school, but I basically started to create that for myself as much as possible doing practica research, TAing neuropsych class. Um, then my internship was in a very neuropsych specific, um, it was a Jero neuropsych track at a hospital. And then postdoc was here at UNC doing just neuropsychology. And now I'm doing it ever since. So hopefully that answered the question. But again, yes. through lots and lots of training. But if you're curious of some of the specifics, Houston guidelines. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, of course, board certification is an option, which I do. I am board certified um, to kind of just show that you've, good, that you've done those things. Right. It doesn't right. mean you're the best neuropsychologist if you have it. But if you don't have it, then we don't know. You might be fantastic and you might not, but it's the way of certifying yes i have the appropriate training and then you take a written exam about the bunch of brain stuff and yeah. then an oral exam where you talk to a bunch of people about brain stuff and prove to them you know what you're talking about dominant most people are left dominant so that's why i'm going to defer from that one here to four calling left the language uh hemisphere. Well, yeah <laughs> but um so i'm going to want to focus on those abilities especially and say answer the question of is your left temporal lobe Besides causing seizures, is it even working? Mm -hmm. How good is it at doing its job? Because if it's not, then you're at lower risk, actually, for losing something if they take it out. It seems counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but you want to do badly on those tests to have less to lose to say, right. well, it's already been affected by the scar tissue, for example, and the long-term effects of seizures. We're at low risk here for taking this thing out. We're at good risk of getting rid of your seizures, which is good, so it might be worth it. Um, but also, I'm going to want to test you afterwards to make sure we didn't cause any additional decline. And if so, updated recommendations, right? Maybe you do, didn't need accommodations before, and now you do. So I need that functioning ability. Maybe you didn't need much supervision before, and now you do. Or maybe a visual field cut sometimes. Right. Left temporal lobe, you might lose the upper right portion of your visual field. You just don't see stuff up there or you neglect it. Um, mm -hmm. Usually that's not a big deal, but especially if you lost, for example, half your field from a stroke, yeah. I would need to know something like that. Um, so there you go.